Good morning, it is I, Matthew James, and yes, you might guess here, I'm actually walking. I'm having a walk this morning. A walk. I'm out in the open. I'm back here in Australia. Um, I'm at Stranger Pond, and I just thought I would just um, fill you in with a few videos, with a few ideas this morning. Um, I really want to talk about image. Hmm, image. Something I've actually not got. Well, I might have one. Scruffy. Um, yeah, tiresome. Um, Mr. James, yes, I might have an image. Uh, but uh, we want to talk about image and identity and um, how so many things hide behind identity, use identity, cre create identity. Identity can be illusion, it can be disguise. How many people uh, are not true to themselves, true to their identity or create an identity that they want other people to believe is actually themselves. There's a lot of it going on in the world um, because we have something called the ego. That name again, ego, false self, true self. We, we know these terms, don't we everyone? And uh, how many of us actually um, think about true identity or false identity or identity even, or disguise even? So many of us are um, busily going on around our lives, walking around through um, this wonderful world without realizing the identity of the world, what the world is. We see this veil, we see this disguise, without actually realizing what, where and what we are. We accept it on face value that this is what the earth is and what the earth is about. And very few of us actually push below that veil or look through that thin disguise or question what is behind that disguise. And this is the idea of shamanism, spiritualism, uh, mysticism, magic even, is all about scraping the surface off what is the apparent and looking at what is the non-apparent. And this is really what identity is, is all about. So I'm going to start making little obvious little facts and quirks and talking about obvious things in videos just to make people think a little bit differently. Now, one thing about identity is, is I need one. I need somebody to give me an idea of different clothes, um, different hairstyle maybe, um, different approach, different manner. I know uh, Chris, the wife, um, says I need an identity. I look, at, um, I look at people and I think, well, yeah, some would say I've got a massive ego. Others would say I haven't got an ego. I personally would say that I, I lack confidence. I need more confidence. I need more self-drive, I need more self-belief. Um, self-drive, yes, and motivation, I definitely need. So um, it is really, really important to, uh, to realize that these things are, are necessities, necessities in life, but I need to motivate myself. I could really do with a hairstylist, um, on a regular basis that can do my hair every day. Ooh, how vain I would be doing that, but my hair's typical hair this morning. Not, not tidy, not untidy, but anyway, we might waffle here. We might not actually talk about this bit, but uh, yeah, I need to be a little bit more motivated. And uh, yeah, everybody needs to be a little bit motivated, but look at this wonderful spot. Here we are. This is Stranger Pond and my name is Matthew James and I welcome you to um, the wonders of this fantastic walk that I do. I can't do Uramby Hills uh, because uh, I haven't got the car but uh, I will do Stranger Pond this morning and look at this fantastic uh, sunrise. Well it's a little bit a uh, little bit later than sunrise now but this is a fantastic spot and uh, I'm just welcoming you to, to join me on my walk this morning um, and I will be doing little little bits and pieces, little places along, along the way so to speak. And I'm just looking at the lens flare there and the lens effect there and I'm enjoying this so I will uh, I'll speak to you guys again very soon um, about the next little idea that I have got. Meanwhile I'm going to, um, I'm going to walk. And just to let everybody know, yes, I am back in Australia. 
This is Australia. This is Stranger Pond. Speak to you soon. Bye, guys. How is everyone today? Good, I hope. I'm feeling pretty good now. I've got all my jet lag and um, I'm getting back into into familiar surroundings here in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, I'm currently walking towards um, Pine Island and I've not uh, walked down this trail for a while. Um, and I'm utilising uh, the fact that uh, I've no vehicle uh, until probably next week. And the idea here is, is I'm going to get as many walks in, in this area as I can uh, before I start doing Yurambi Hills and, and further environs. And it's quite a pleasant um, day this morning. There are blue skies. There's no rain. And it's currently probably around about, what, 10, 11 degrees, which is very UK. Um, and uh, I've got my headphones on, as you can see, and I'm currently listening to a very loud, heavy track by Saxon, which is um, really taking my thoughts away, wandering my thoughts away. But um, this is uh, a trail towards Stranger Pond, sorry, towards Pine Island, I should say. And that way is Stranger Pond. And I was talking about identity. I was talking about the veil um, of illusion that is, is around us here. We've got this wonderful earth plane with its rocks. We have the rocks. We have the wood. Um, we have the air around us. We have the trees. We have the sky. We have all the apparent things. But, um, but people... Um, sometimes think about and really discard because they don't realize the, the implications of it everything is the same i touched a rock i touched a piece of wood i'm touching the air i'm touching my face um i could touch a tree over there it's all the same energy everything is the same energy everything is the same it has the same identity it is the same entity and this is its veil this is its um false self we're looking at the false self of the earth plane it's the apparent self it's what we are um, we perceive or we are made to perceive or we're programmed to perceive what the earth plane is all about our brain is a a radio receiver transmitter but it's not actually well it is the brain it's the mind um, and it could be programmed imagine if you'd got a um, a tuning, uh, a tuner um, for your mind and you just tweak the frequency slightly higher or lower you'd see a different earth plane. The veil, the apparent veil of the earth would change. Um, it would maybe be like this or maybe it would be different or maybe there would be things coming in or in out of focus that we currently don't see but the, the apparent veil, the false self of the earth plane would change. And this is what, again, what uh, the mystic, the spiritualist, the shaman is able to do. They can tune their minds, tune their awareness, tune their consciousness, and we see other things. We hear other things. Things that are not in the apparent, but are there, but on different frequencies. And really, that is what um, disguises, identities are all about. It gives a sense of apparent self. Now I'm going to do some more birdie pictures. I see a nice big uh, raven over there. Be back shortly. Bye -bye. This is the um, approach to Pine Island and I'm sharing my uh, journey with you uh, this morning. I'm just ch just crossing the, uh, the cattle grid um, and I'm just approaching a sign that says Pine Island North that way, Pine Island South that way. And I'm actually going to go to Pine Island North my intention is not to go down to the beach. We do have a, a man-made beach here. Um, it is a sandy beach on the on the river side. Um, but I'm choosing to actually go towards Pine Island North and walk through, because my intention is to get as far down there as I can. Um, there are some um, wonderful um, cliffs further down, but I don't think I'm going to get that far uh, today. I'm not actually don't actually know where the pathway is. I've got to find that. That's one of the idea of one of these adventures is to get down there. But the day is just absolutely superb. We have got autumnal leaves on the trees. Um, there is a wonderful example. So we are we are in autumn on this side of the world. And I'm laughing. Um, a friend of mine um, put a post on Facebook about seasons, 
And I, I remarked on Facebook, which was quite funny, I think it was funny anyway, that um, I'd actually gone from spring to autumn in 24 hours. And, uh, which is true because it was spring in the UK last week. I mean, this time last week, or with Thursday, um, we would have been heading towards um, the Wigan um, Inns Hinley area again in the UK. I had, an, I had a full day of, um, of readings from, what was it, about half three to, oh, I finished about nine o'clock. So I, had, I was jam-packed that day with, with readings, which was my last reading day um, in the UK. Um, and that was, that was last week. And I'm still going through all the photographs of the UK, by the way. Um, I realised just how many I'd taken. Um, the only disappointment, really, was the was the birdie pictures. I was anticipating a lot more. Um, I got my, my raven. I mean, I must admit, I didn't realise that we still had ravens in the UK. I, I was being falsely um, informing people that we didn't have ravens in the UK, and then there popped up a few ravens. So, And then I borrowed my, my brother's um, bird book, um, this is the ironic thing, here we are in Australia and I've got a bird book with Australian birds and my brother who I've not seen for 10 years um, has, got, has got them of the, of the UK, well it's actually his wonderful wife Verena that uh, has the bird book but uh, I looked in that bird book and I found that uh, we've, got, we've got ravens and there hey presto popped up a raven in front of me so uh, I've got some raven pictures, magpie pictures which was my intention, but they were very scarce and they weren't as, um, let's say, as many uh, magpies in the UK as I, as I can remember. It was rooks everywhere, um, obviously ravens everywhere. And I'm heading towards here because I hope there's actually going to be a couple of parrots that will permit me to take some pictures. But um, I also took um, hair. What else did I do? I did, I did hair. Um, what was the other thing? I did hair. I did squirrel. Um, I've got blackbird, blue tit, grape tit, um, yeah, I'm just noticing these parrots, so um, I'll be back very shortly everyone. Guys, these are grass parrots, or red rump parrots, um, I'm just going to film them before they decide to fly off, but here we are, all on the power line here, this is so on the UK, you can tell I'm not in the UK here, we don't get this in the UK, we don't get such colourful birds, these are, um, these are like, um, grass parakeets or uh, gr uh, grass parrots and I'm just hesitating because I'm just trying to just get the focus right the focus on this silly camera hasn't been working and I finally got it to work there they go aren't they uh, beautiful there's a few of them and this is the good thing about um, Pine Island you get a lot of parrots quite a few varieties and uh, you can see the red rump on that one and that's where they get the name Red Rook Parrot from, obviously. Well, I thought I'd share that with you. Okay guys, it's me Matthew James in Australia, still undertaking the, the Pine Island walk. Um, just been capturing raven pictures, kangaroo pictures. How can you not be in Australia? I mean, sorry, how can you not take pictures of kangaroos when you're in Australia as a pom? They're seen as um, a bit of a novelty over in the UK, but they're wonderful to have around. And hey, I captured a picture of a kangaroo this morning, and a raven, and a magpie, and grass parrots. Um, some wonderful pictures um, again. Um, so we're continuing on our walk here. Um, and my question for you guys is, um, what do you identify with? What, um, what world do you actually identify with? Are you in the mystical world? Are you in the logical world? Are you in a bit of both? Are you in the, um, the strife survival um, world? Are you in the world of adventure? Are you in the world of fun? Are you in the world of experiment? They're all different worlds, all different perceptions, all different aspects of the same veil, the same um, experience we're all having. We're all the same, by the way. We're all the same um, entity, the same consciousness. We've just got different aspects. We're all just different aspects of exactly the same creature, the same explorer, the same being. There's only one of us. It's just that we're being splattered into how many billions? People don't realize that or people have forgotten that. We are all one and the same. 
And that's basically uh, the concept of, um, let's say, telepathy, consciousness. I've got a few birdies here. Uh, I'm going to capture some photographs. I'll be back. There's kangaroos over there. I will be back. So this is Matthew James. I'm just walking past um, some kangaroos. You can just about see them there. I, I hope. Yes, you can. There we go. Quite common. Quite. I'm in their environment. They're by the roadside. Uh, I'm trying not to disturb them too much, but there is um, part of consciousness that we identify as a kangaroo. And um, this uh, part of the identity and the disguise of the airplane known as a kangaroo resides naturally here in the Southern Hemisphere in a place known or we call as Australia. So this is what we basically identify. This is the reality that we actually identify with. Kangaroos being in Australia and um, they're quite commonplace here in Australia, obviously, being in Australia. Um, and so many people over here just take them for granted. They're by the roadside, they're in front of them, they're in the fields. And because they're so busy in the furore of their, their everyday life here, um, they, they forget the wonderful surroundings, the different surroundings that they are actually in. And it's the same the world over. America, Canada, you get the bears. Um, you get the vultures. They are part and parcel of the Americas and you identify the buffalo, the, the buffalo and the bison with America. Um, you, re you identify the gazelle, say, with Africa, and these are, these are part and parcels of the disguises that is the earth plane. And the idea with what I do anyway, or my, my view of my own form of shamanism and druidism, is I'm taking note of the wonderful surroundings, I'm introducing everybody to the wonderful surroundings, and getting everybody to look around them and look at the world that uh, they are in um, and try and change their perception of this world. Get out too much of the, get out of the, the part of the world that is all about turmoil and struggle and strife. It's out there, but we are having our consciousness drawn to it more and more on a daily basis. So that's what we're actually creating. We don't realize that Something out there, someone out there, whatever out there, is pulling us closer and closer to a world of dis total destruction because that is what is happening. Our perceptions are being drawn and we're made to identify with the violence, the wars, the warfare, the terrorism, the terrorist plots. And we need to step back and ask why we are being forced to look at these, these, um, these situations. People or someone, whatever, is trying to dominate us, um, overtake us, overtake our consciousness, and again, driving to change the, the, the false self of the earth plane, again, from a place of beauty, of unconditional love, of wonderful experiences, to one of survival, and worry, and famine, and strife, and killing, and death and dying and destruction and, and nuclear bombs and explosions and killings and machine guns and all that negative. It didn't be in this earth plane. In the golden age, way, 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 way back in the mankind's past, we had a golden age where there was no need for any fighting. There was no need for any negative. It isn't a dream. Uh, it did actually take place. Um, and we, um, we peace lovers, we unconditional love bearers are trying to, to bring the world back to that particular existence in some way. It is a perception, it is a veil. It is a veil that um, we, we forget. And really what I'm asking everybody to do, um, and I know I'm not speaking to a majority, um, I know that when you're watching this, you probably will be a tiny, 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 tiny part of mankind. I mean, tiny part. Probably, um, if mankind was a ton in weight, you guys would be less than 0.25 of an ounce or something like that. So I'm only dealing with a minority, but that's all that is important to me. Um, I don't want to, to preach out there. I don't want to be the... The, the six 
61 million hits on on um, on YouTube with my video. I don't want that. That's not. It's not the point of these videos. The videos is to get through to the ones that are supposed to hear this and the, the ones that effectively I'll say will be on my wavelength and there will be very, 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 very few because I know my identity, I know my veil, I know myself is quite high vibrational. Now high vibrational does not mean ego, royalty, anything special. It's just I know that I'm on a very high vibration um, and I'm very oddball eccentric different and i don't appeal to everyone so my videos are going to appeal to the to to very few people and it's not really important it's it's who listens to it and gets kind of the message that i'm putting out here and it's all about disguise identity questioning your identity questioning the veil that is around you questioning the reality that you're in and really trying to look at it in in a different way in a different light trying to look at life in a in in a different way and uh, the scenery around me has changed a little bit again um i'm just on the their outer edges of pine island uh, i must admit i'm going down a trail which i haven't a clue where it's freaking going um, i've not actually been this way before i know the river is is down there somewhere um but i've just been wandering off as I do, um, and I've noticed this is a bike trail. It's not actually a walker's trail. Um, no, there are footprints, but they are my own footprints. And we've got kangaroo footprints here, so kangaroos go by here. So I'm just gonna set off back. And this, this really epitomizes what I'm talking about. I've gone down this trail. I've seen this trail on the road, on, on my feet in front of me. And I haven't questioned where the trail goes. I've just set off blazing down the trail and realised it's not the direction that I want to go. How many of us actually do that in life? How many of us see a trail in front of us? Oh, it must be right because other people have gone this way. Oh, it must be right because we've been shown this is the direction we're supposed to be going. How many of us go completely off sync like I've done now, very symbolically, and carry on without realizing, hey, let's set off back. This is the wrong way, chappies. Hey, hey, sheepy, I'm going the wrong fucking way. Why don't you all fucking turn round and go back the way you came? This isn't the right trail. But sadly, we don't do it on the airplane, or so very few of us do it. We follow the trails that are supposedly recommended or put out for us. Why the hell do we do that? We're individuals, we're free will for fuck's sake. Why do we follow others or why do we follow trails, false trails? I know it's all about the ones that have gone before and all about experiences from before and all that, but why not gather the knowledge, the information, the wisdom, the experiences that you've had previously on this existence? I'm talking about past lives, but we, we've all been here before. I don't care what anyone says. We have been in existence. If we're on the earth plane, we've had experiences somewhere before. We are a consciousness that is basically designed for experiences. So we have had past lives or past wanderings. What we're supposed to do is remember, collect them, collect them, not remember, oh, I was a fisherman and I got bitten by a shark. And I got swallowed by a whale and that's how I died. Oh, that was my past life. Oh, my name was Jonah. Bullshit. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in what I'd learned, the wisdom that I learned, the mistakes that I made, the things that I had got to gain. And that's what we're supposed to do. And that's the trail we're supposed to follow. It's the trail of free will. And I say, fuck convention. And I'm swearing. I don't care, it's my video. So I'm not following convention. Fuck convention. Um, say sod off to, oh, you must go this way. The trail says this way. Or that door says it can't be opened. Look, it's got a no entry sign. Bugger that. I want to go that way. There are no rules in the universe. We create our own rules or we have the rules created for us. So quite honestly, we should do two fingers up to convention become rebellious, go back along trails that we've followed, go, I'm not a sheep, I'm a goat. I'm not, I'm not a shark, I'm a dolphin. 
Um, I'm not a moth, I'm a butterfly. Uh, what else? There's all sorts of little analogies. I'm not a lion, I'm a tiger. And we should change convention and become something different, become what we're supposed to be, simply by turning around along trails like I've just done, getting back to where we are, who we are, the core being the true self, identify with all the false selves and the realize, realize why and understand why we were made to be those false selves and then approach life in a completely different way. Your life will change, completely change. Here we have an acorn. Look, there's an acorn. That can become the mighty oak. There you go, the mighty oak tree. How's that for an analogy? Hey, gone I good today. There's the mighty oak. There's the tiny acorn from which it grew from. And we can all become these mighty oaks. And this is a wonderful example of, of an oak tree here. Gorgeous oak tree, I love oak trees. Oak trees, by the way, mean doors. This is a door. This is an opening. This is um, uh, in the Celtic. This is a door. This is a portal. This is an opening. This is a new adventure. And the new adventure for me starts right now with this acorn. And with that, I'm putting it in my back pocket. Um, I'm going to find myself a little twig of oak. Actually, I'm going to do some rune castings here with oak. So, guys, I'll speak to okay, you soon. Okay, guys, I've got now. some wonderful um, oak twigs here. And I think it's time that I actually did a casting. So, um, here we are. Simple process. A bundle of oak twigs or oak staves. Then I'm just going to simply drop to the ground. Are you ready? Now, let's see the patterns that I've got, the patterns that are unfolding here. And they are patterns that are unfolding. There are two clear patterns here. Two clear patterns. We have that one, which looks like an arrow, which considering the trail that it's on, it's pointing in the wrong direction. Um, and this is our, our daily perception. This is what we are, we are told. This is the way. This is the way, this is the way, and the true way is represented by those staves there. And you've got to say that that is good rune casting because there are always options in our life at the moment. So this casting is called options. Now I took that one, that was the wrong turn. That was not the direction I wanted to go, but because it's an arrow, you automatically think, hey, no, nobody's going to deceive me here. There's an arrow. I'm going to follow that. That is the truth. That represents the truth, the true path, which lies at a higher consciousness to the, to the other. So we are basically dealing with options and choices in this earth plane journey, this earth plane adventure. And those runes there, or that cast part of the casting there, represents, really, there's a bit of a, and let me just get that out of the way, there's a bit of a, let's say, a zigzag going on. And it's moved from the level of the arrow, which is actually pointing us away into a false reality, to a higher plane and a higher consciousness. So that is the rune casting for today, using oak staves and I've got the acorn in my back pocket so um, I've got the ideas in my pocket back pocket at the moment. Well I've just realised the time guys it's um, time I was actually getting back back to home base I've got clients this morning and I've got to log on to a phone line as well so I'm actually going to draw the journey to a close here um, you are at Pine Island North uh, you have been listening to me Matthew James in Australia I keep stressing that because I'm taking the piss out of myself that's all uh, but thank you for um, thank you for watching this particular video and all the videos. If you do indeed watch them, there will be more interesting events um, unfolding in the coming weeks. So uh, I've got some ideas. I've got different uh, directions, things I've learned from the UK or things I remembered from the UK, which I will be sharing with you. So um, uh, for the moment, um, you've been watching me um, on Thursday, the 14th of April. Uh, 2016. Thank you so much guys. See you later. Bye for now.